if you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you want to get funding for your deals, unlimited funding for your deals, regardless of what your banker says, regardless of what your hard money lender says, regardless of what your broker says, then don't go anywhere. I'm going to plug you into the funding in just a moment. Well, welcome to the show. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority, coming to you on the show here from uh, Moorhead City, North Carolina. And I've got some very, very special guests here on the show with me today. I'm going to introduce them to you in just a moment. Very good friends of mine I've known for um, uh, uh, quite a few years now. And they're going to be revealing to you as to how they raised and attracted $5 million in new private funding just within the last 12 months. But before I introduce them and bring them on, I want to remind everyone, uh, particularly if you're new here to the show, whether you're viewing on YouTube or you're listening on iTunes or Google Play or what have you, the upcoming live event that I'm presenting in just a few short weeks away, it's right around the corner. I don't know another real estate investing live event like this. You actually get to network with private lenders. We're going to go on the bus tour and actually look at our rehab houses. You'll learn the rehabbing process from start to finish if you have an interest in rehabbing. And we're going to teach. I'll be there myself all three days showing you how to find deeply discounted properties before other real estate investors even know they exist, how to sell any home in three days or less, and then, of course, how to automate the process. So it's right here on the uh, video if you're watching on uh, YouTube. It's, uh, so get on over there right after the show and check it out and get registered. It's www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. So I hope to see you in person at the upcoming live event. That's the Real Estate Investing Cashflow Conference. Look forward to seeing you in person. All right, on with the show. I'm so excited to have as my special guest today. It's a brother team. They're up in uh, Evansville, Indiana, and it's Andrew and Aaron Schlag. And oh, my lands, am I excited to have you guys on. So welcome, Andrew, and welcome, An uh, Aaron, to the show. Thank, Thank you, Jay. Excited to be on. So you all are special in another kind of way. It's the first time in almost 90 episodes that I've had two of special guests on simultaneously. So we're going to see how this rolls. Before we dive into the subject of how you've raised all this private money, I'm proud to say that you all are both students of mine. You've been to my uh, live events. And I think at least one of you have my Where to Get the Money Now system, if not both of you. And y'all have raised a lot of private money. But before we get to that piece of the story, Andrew, how about you go first? Tell our viewers and listeners what your career, your business career, your working career looked like before you came into real estate investing. Of course, you were probably in sixth grade is my guess. But anyway, go ahead. Tell them. <laughs> yes. So prior to real estate investing, uh, we was in construction and, uh, at April of 2014 is when I delved into uh, the real estate investing. And prior to that, wasn't a lot of money, was doing some construction. And due to some, some health issues, I actually was pretty well flat broke when I found real estate. So definitely been a huge change in the last four and a half years. Yeah. So this was just a short four and a half years ago when you came into the world of real estate investing. Do you remember about how long ago it was that you came to one of my live events approximately. The time goes by so fast. About three and a half years. Okay, about three and a half years ago. And so you're in construction and then you came into the real estate investing. How about you, Aaron? Yeah, so uh, Jay, I was in construction. It was a family owned company. I was the foreman at the time. I was also going to uh, college nights uh, at the time. So we run a crew working, you know, long, hard hours. So and I ended up dropping out of college, long story short, whenever we got into real estate and in my quote spare time instead of going to college. And so uh, my brother championed the way he stepped out and, and took the big leap. And then not too far behind him, I followed suit. And that's when we became yeah. a team. How old are you now, Aaron? I'm 29. That's disgusting. Okay. All right. So how about you, Andrew? How old are you? 26. Yeah, that's even more disgusting. All right. <laughs> Someone should not be as successful as you guys as so young as you are, but I, I sure am proud of you. So uh, still there with you, Aaron, 
um, what was it about real estate investing that got you interested? I know who it was. It was Andrew. Sure. But, but what was it about it that intrigued you? I would say it, in the construction company, I did have a lot of opportunity there. I worked a lot of hard, long hours. I dealt with a lot of people. Obviously, I, I love all of those things. I love hard work. I love dealing with people. But I felt like they, it was going to take me a long time to get where I wanted to be, if I would even be able to attain what I wanted through that. And so I would say the limitless ability with real estate is what attracted me to, you know, basically turn in a 180 and go in a different direction to what my original intentions were. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Andrew? What intrigued you? What got your interest? I would say very similar. Uh, to the fact, of course, I ran out of choices, which was a good thing. I guess necessity is the mother of all invention, right? Yeah. So it, it was uh, bad that, that turned to good, as one of my great mentors says, coincidence is God's way of staying anonymous, right? That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> so that being said, when I found real estate, you know, moving out of the construction industry into that, it was the opportunity to structure deals to you know raise the private money and to be able to create cash flow you know on the basis of 10 units 100 units a thousand units limitless and uh, yeah. so that was a very huge thing to me as well as all the tax benefits and other benefits that go along with it right right so let's go ahead and jump into the the private money subject uh, and that's not the only thing i want to talk about here on the show i want to talk about how you all are locating, you know, some of your uh, deals these days. I want to talk about that, but because that changes, you know, that changes over time. But from the time that you came to my live event, Andrew, and Aaron, you've been as well, about how much private money have you attracted and raised? Six million dollars since attending your private event or your, awesome. your where to get the money now event. Awesome. So just to be sure, just in case we've got some new viewers or listeners, let's be really, really clear on what private money is. So, hey, they know, I know what it is. I wanted to hear it from you. So, uh, Aaron, tell our viewers and listeners what exactly is private money and what are we not talking about? So, what exactly is private money? Private money, and in a nutshell, someone that's got, they've got some money, and they are looking for somewhere that they can put that that's secure. You know, a, a lot of ours, I'm going to give example, are people that are just sitting on it with a very minimal rate of return. It fluctuates to, you know, the return rates ridiculously low. And so that's where a lot of ours come from. They want somewhere that they can put their money that's safe, that's secure, that's going to give them a much better rate of return. And so in a nutshell, we consider private money to you. Yeah, so these are individuals that we're doing business with. We're not talking banks or institution. We're definitely not talking hard money lenders. In fact, show that I was broadcasting. Um, no, I was doing my free coaching Friday on Facebook last week. And uh, I had someone comment in and this quote unquote private lender was actually not a private lender, but they were a hard money lender. So let's come back over to you, Andrew, for a moment. So. We're doing business with individuals, attracting the private money. Where can the individuals get their funding or what kind of funds can the individuals use to invest with you in your business or, or make private money loans? So the first would be money in the bank, cash in the bank, savings accounts, et cetera. Also IRAs, 401ks, retirement funds. It's another great opportunity for them to take something out of a, a, a lower interest or a, a risky investment and put it into something that's stable and secure. Right. They're going to use their retirement funds to loan money to you, uh, to do business with you and your company. How, what have they got to do in order to use their retirement funds? They would need to get it put into a self-directed IRA. There's a handful of companies that do that. Personally, as Aaron had made mention, so far, most of our private money has been from people who had it, but I also love it when it comes from an IRA or 401k and it's able to build someone's retirement and, you know, essentially make their uh, retirement better than they expected. Exactly. And so we've got really two sets of listeners and viewers here on this show. We've got people that are either real estate investors or they're, you know, considering doing some deals. But some of those same people could be interested in, private lending and, you know, getting high rates of return. 
So I know it varies with the deal. It varies with the time. But what's a range or a return, kind of return that you all are paying these days to private lenders? We're normally doing 8 to 10%, depending on the deal. That's pretty well uh, where we're currently at and what uh, our, our people are very happy with. So. I imagine so, because I just looked at the USA Today last Thursday, and even with interest rates rising, and they are rising, the average 12-month certificate of deposit last week was like at 0.81%, you know? Yeah. So you come along and pay somebody 8%, that's many, many more times in returns than they can get, you know, in the uh, certificate of deposit. Right. Because they don't start with a zero. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, a point. <laughs> so now you you have attracted and raised uh, these millions and millions of dollars in, in private money, uh, individuals doing business with you. Aaron, let's come back over to you and I'll let Aaron go first. And then, Andrew, you can answer as well. So for the benefit of our real estate investors that are viewing and tuning in, what are some of your ways or what's, what's one? Let's just do one at a time. Aaron, what's one way that you and Andrew have attracted and raised private money? Yeah, great question. So one of our ways it seems it works well for us is word of mouth from other investors. They'll get to talking between themselves to their friends. And so that's probably our favorite way. So you're talking about referrals from your very first private, um, from other private lenders you're already doing business with. Absolutely. Yes, word of mouth. And then, of course, they want to they have a discussion to see, you know, what the Slag Brothers are up to and what it's all about. And okay. from there, then, you know, we take it from there. And it's, it's great. All right. So, Andrew, let's say you're a real estate investor, which you are. And let's say you have not raised any private money yet. You've got no private money, you know, pledged to you. Given what you now know about attracting private money, how would you get the word out? Good question. So first off, I would say a lot of overcoming any obstacles I had early on raising private money was just uh, increasing my level of confidence and, and knowing that the deals that we have are good deals. So whether that means getting an appraisal, to prove that it's worth what I thought it was or whatever it may have been. So I go to that private lender with confidence. I will say between church friends, you know, we've been around church all of our life. That has been a, a way that people have approached us. And then also through business meetings, you know, whether it be RIAs or, or whatever business meetings it is, and people uh, find out what we're doing and you offer them that opportunity. And as Aaron mentioned, the word kind of spreads from there. So being a brand new, taking myself back four and a half years, trying to find my very first private lender, I would say increase your confidence. Sure, you know that you know that you're you're going to find the deal that fits the uh, criteria uh, that's going to be safe and great for them, and also leave you plenty of profit and offer them a great opportunity. So, Aaron, have you and Andrew? attracted and you know put the word out has it all been one one on one or have you done any group presentations such as to have you done anything like private lender luncheons or have you done any presentations like to you know a civic club like the rotary club or any educational presentations like that or has it all been one on one as far as for raising our money it has all been one on one and word of mouth both yes okay excellent now, back over to you, Andrew. Before we went live on the show, you mentioned that your all's goal is to attract $15 million this year yes. in, in private money. So, obviously, if you're going to be jumping from $6 million now up to $15 million within the next 12 months, my best guess is you're planning on doing some more commercial projects. I'm familiar with one commercial that you began maybe a couple of years ago, but what's your plan for the funding? Yes. So we intend to raise, as we uh, you mentioned, the $15 million this year and do multiple commercial projects. We already have uh, two in line that we're working on, working toward, and to raise, you know, private money from the private lenders. As made mentioned, we've done a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. We've been invited to speak at a couple of real estate groups that we've spoke at, you know, just as, as uh, getting out there and, and showing people an opportunity. But 
know, our intention and goal for that would be to continue, basically do what, what got us the first six and, and ramp that up times three. Gotcha, gotcha. So Aaron, what kind of deals are you and Andrew doing these days? As far as in the single family, we're doing a lot of rehabs and we're doing some pretty houses. And right now, the commercial deals that we are we are working as you know, you mentioned one, we have a mobile home community we're working on. Uh, it's a great turnaround project. The other commercial deals that Andrew referenced, we are really looking at self-storage heavily. That's our goal in 2019 is to to do one, uh, one of those. I mean, we're doing a lot of single families still. Okay. So about how many single family deals are, are you doing a year now, would you say, give or take? We're averaging between 40 and 50 a year. We do about one a week is what we average. I got you. Yeah. And what percentage of those would you say you're wholesaling? Oh boy, Andrew, what percentage are we wholesaling right now off the top of your head? We are probably hosts and back up. I think we actually averaged a little bit over one a week last year. So I would say about 10% of them we wholesale. Right now we're doing, you know, a substantial amount of rehabs. Obviously, you know, sometimes it's better to uh, get a slightly smaller profit sooner than a slightly larger one later. So. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. So, well, just to be sure all of our viewers and listeners know what we're talking about. Andrew, tell our viewers and listeners, what's the difference between wholesaling and rehabbing? Absolutely. So to wholesale, we typically will buy a property, either not touch it or maybe go in if there's some junk in and take the junk out and immediately add a profit. And then for rehabbing, which is Aaron basically covers that side of the business for rehabbing, we get our crews in and do a, a renovation, perhaps facelift, new paint, new cabinets, sometimes new roof, new heat and air, whatever it needs and make the home typically like new. And then resell it, obviously, again, at a profit. But what's a good average deal look like? In other words, what's your average retail you're selling it for? And what's your average size rehab budget? It would be around $150,000 home in the Evansville market would be the retail. I like right now we've been using some some unique strategies with with tax sales that we're working through. I've been buying a lot of these hundred and fifty thousand dollar homes, and I'm not using percentages. I'm using numbers right at the moment for between forty and fifty thousand with a twenty to thirty thousand dollar rehab. Yeah. So that's that's been what you've been seeing with a lot of our flips right now. Right, right. Well, you just said something that triggers this question. I know all of our viewers and the listeners are wanting to hear your all's answers to this. And that is regardless of our exit strategy, regardless of what we're going to do with the properties, we've got to find the deals, right? We've got to find, uh, we've got to find the discounted properties, et cetera. So Andrew, let me let you go first. So, you know, what's working today may not have been working a couple of years ago, but Andrew, what is one of your best ways right now for you and Aaron to get motivated sellers raising their hand and you, you know, taking a look at the deal. Absolutely. So we have our two top ways right now are number one, has already been mentioned, which I'll get back to. We also are doing a lot of online right now. So we're doing a lot of Facebook ads, paid Facebook ads, and a lot of online ads that are creating, you know, opportunity. People are calling us wanting to sell their house and uh, we're buying them that way. The other uh, top way we're currently doing it, as Aaron's made mention, is we at Indiana. I love Indiana for tax sales, and we're uh, buying tax sale properties as well. So those are our two top ways right now. Thirdly, obviously, this is something that comes over time, is we're getting a lot of word of mouth as well. So a lot of people are calling us, you know, because they've heard about us from word of mouth. So that's the, our third way, and that's yeah. how we're getting what would you say is the population of your target market? The surrounding area, half a million. Evansville itself, about a quarter of a million, about 250,000. Okay, very good, very good. So Aaron, since we're over to you for a moment, any other ways come to mind other than what Andrew uh, just mentioned on, on locating motivated sellers? On locating motivated sellers, the other thing that I use, we don't do a lot of bandit signs at, at intersections and so on, but at some of our homes that we'll have, let's say we're rehabbing them and stuff like that. It's interesting because everyone that calls off of those is usually, I shouldn't say everyone, most are usually motivated and we will use those in our yards, especially high traffic areas. We still put out bandit signs every chance we get. And those, those sellers are always, almost always motivated. So that's one of, that's one of the ways and our conversion rates very high for those. 
Yeah, excellent. So now both you and Andrew have mentioned uh, the tax sales, the tax certificates. It sounds like y'all, that's like one of your big supplies of uh, or, yes. or big strategies of, of getting the deals. So for example, I'm going to guess most of our viewers and listeners here on this show, most, probably over 95 to 99%, have never done a tax sale deal. So could you break that process down step by step? And we can take two or three minutes for it. Break the process down, Aaron. Step one, step two, step three. I don't know anything about tax sales. What's the first thing I need to do? How do I learn about them? And and what is an expensive lesson you have learned about tax sales? I'm going to be totally transparent through this process. What The first thing I would do is get yourself a good real estate attorney and a good realtor that knows tax sales. Without those, we would have made some serious expensive mistakes. Very bad. But for example, if you, if you didn't have those team members in place, what could go wrong with a tax sale deal? I could sell personal property before I was supposed to and really end up in some serious hot water. You know, I could... I could try to gain access to the property before it gets the final court orders that we can have access to the property. And, you know, there's a lot of bad things that could happen through that process. Or I could buy a property that has judgments on it that no one knows about that a guarantee is going to come up when they hear that an investor has bought it with money. You know, so that in a nutshell, I would say, make sure you have yourself a good real estate agent and a good real estate attorney that knows tax sales, knows your tax sale laws in your state. And can make sure you know you walk through the process seamlessly that way. Yeah. Now with that, your real estate attorney, I assume, is going to do the, your title search, right? And and discover if there's any attachments or liens or judgments against that property before you spend any money, right? Absolutely. And you know, then all of the proper notices are also going to go out to all of the heirs or potential heirs. Everything is going to be done, you know by the book and, you know, in sequence properly that, you know, any of us without experience would make a mistake on. Yeah. So why is it important to have a realtor on your team that knows the tax sale process and what will your realtor do? So our realtor not only would locate those deals for us in our, in our example, in my experience, they do locate those for us and, and will turn us on to those is first and foremost, those tax sales. That's the way we do it. They will bring those to us because our realtors that we use do have the connections they need to find out when these are available. For those of us out here that don't have a relationship with a realtor that could, Mm -hmm. you know, bring us tax sale deeds, I mean, tax sale deals, do you have any suggestions on how to go about locating a realtor that would be plugged into that? That would be plugged into that. Andrew, do you have a little bit more insight on that probably than I would as far as finding uh, finding that realtor? Yes. And I would say for the first few years of our real estate investing business, we did not do those just uh, for the reason of mm-hmm. the uh, complications that can go along with them. Profit. So you do want to be sure you have those the, uh, things in place. Uh, that being said, to find a realtor who is uh, involved and can do what he was discussing is definitely going to be a special realtor. You just, uh, you know, look for realtor signs and start calling them. You, you, you ain't got the best shot in the world to find a one that does tax sales. <laughs> so that being said, I would, uh, I would say networking at your local real estate and any, any type of meetings where investors gather that you could touch base with investors and other people who are doing anything similar and ask them who you know they would recommend. So getting yourself involved in that community and keeping your eyes and ears open to, uh, to see who's doing the deals. And then secondly, is if somebody doesn't always give a, a clear answer, you don't have the opportunity to ask someone, you kind of watch and listen. And when you find somebody who is doing tax sales, just see what realtor happens to be getting their listings and give them a ring. <laughs> so. Awesome. Well, that's interesting. That's interesting. Uh, I appreciate you sharing that. Wow, I can't believe we're almost getting near to the end of the show here and we we just got started. I can already tell I'm going to want to have y'all back on again because y'all got a a lot of information you can share. So let's go back over to Aaron for a moment. So Aaron, y'all, you and Andrew have been doing this for a few years now. What's the best advice that comes to your mind that you would give to a newbie, to a new real estate investor that's never done a deal before? 
So the first advice I would give to a real estate investor and what I do when I have one that asks me is two things, you know, don't let a no discourage you from moving on to another deal. And, you know, always, you know, not only don't let that no discourage you, but always you're going to have to work harder than what most people think to get to where you want to be. And so always, always plan on working hard and don't let a discouragement or no, you know, push you or, or push you down. Excellent. Andrew, what advice would you give uh, to a new real estate investor? Be sure you're looking for deals. Get on the phone and work hard and, and uh, until you can get a contract, raise the money and, and order. Once you know the steps to the process, it's just a matter of implementing them. And as Aaron said, you know, it's likely you're going to encounter some, some no's or some bumps in the road before you get that yes and that big check. One last question, and then we're going to give uh, information to everybody as to how uh, folks can contact you and a reason that they might want to contact you. So, Aaron, let me come back over to you. And, Andrew, I want to ask you the same question. So, Andrew, you're going to have more time to think about this question than Aaron will. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh -oh. and, and if Aaron's got to scratch his head for a second, we'll come back to you, Andrew. But here's the question. You know, we all learn lessons. Some lessons cost more money than, than others. So y'all been doing the business for a while. What would you say is one of the biggest mistakes that you've made since you've been in real estate investing? You may, you, you may think of a particular deal that if you knew then what you do now, you would have done something differently on that deal. What lesson learned comes to mind that could save our viewers and listeners some money? Yes. The hard way. Uh, that is a great question. And uh, the first one that pops in my head is be careful who your partners are in business. Choose your partners wisely. Make sure that they are bringing as much or more to the table than what you are legitimately. Don't be afraid to ask the hard questions to that potential partner. Now, well, now define what, what you mean by a partner. Okay, so in regards to, and this has been our experience, I, I'm sure a lot, of, uh, a lot of investors will encounter this if they haven't already. When you go into business, you always have a lot of people that want to partner with you, especially when you appear like you're moving up and doing what you're planning on doing, hitting your goals. You have a lot of people that will want to work with you and partner on deals with you and so on and so forth. I've, sp I've spoken to a lot of newer investors that have encountered this problem. And I always caution them to say, always make sure that that potential partner, whether it's a deal, you know, specifically a deal partner, make sure that they are, you know, are able to perform what they are going to and always make sure it's in writing. You know, and, and you asked the first thing come to my head and that is the first thing that came to my head. That can awesome. save them a lot of money. How about you, Andrew? I would say keep your eyes peeled when you're looking at deals. And I would I would simply say it like this. I, I contend, and Aaron can verify this, I contend to have a big heart. That's uh, one of the very big things that I love about real estate is you get to help people sometimes who need out of a house. You get to help people who need into a house. It's a lot of getting to help people, and I love that. That being said, I tended to believe anything I was told. So perhaps if a seller or a, a realtor would, uh, when I was offered on a property, would tell me that something wasn't wrong that was, uh, rather than verifying it myself, I would leave it, you know, cut us out of profits on a deal or two in the over 300 deals we have done because of the fact that I didn't verify myself and I just I wanted to believe the best. So I would say, keep your eyes peeled. Definitely have a heart for people, but also verify the facts. Well, what you just said reminded me of what Ronald Reagan's famous quote was, not that he didn't have more than one, but the one that comes to mind is trust, but verify. <laughs> Absolutely. That's perfect. Yes. Well, that's excellent. That's excellent. Well, guys, I tell you, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate y'all taking the time out of your very successful real estate investing business to come here and be on the show. I know you've uh, given some great information. I know you've been an inspiration to our viewers and listeners, and, and I'm sure we've got quite a few that would like to connect with you. We may have some viewers and listeners that are not only interested in real estate investing, but they might want to do some private lending as well. They might want to do some business with you and, and get some uh, high rates of return safely and secured, uh, particularly with you paying, you know, eight to 10%, which is very, very awesome these days. So um, whichever one of y'all wants to give out the contact information as to how, how people can uh, connect with you and continue the conversation. 
the best way to contact us, well, we've got several ways, but our, our email address is the schlagbros at gmail.com. Our phone number is 812-303-8209. It is the schlagbros at gmail.com. It's T-H-E-S-C-H-L-A-G-B-R-O-S at gmail.com. And our phone number is 812-303-8209. You can also follow us and you can also uh, direct messages on, on uh, Facebook, Instagram. You can find us there at the Schlag Bros. So it's at the Schlag Bros, just like our email address. And uh, Twitter, we are at the Schlag Bros as well. So Excellent. Uh, there's several places you can contact us. All right. I love it. I love it. All right, Andrew. Parting comments. Well, thank you for the opportunity to be on, Jay, and to be able to, to share with your audience our, our story and uh, excited uh, to hopefully be an inspiration to somebody else who, like you said, is maybe getting started, looking forward to a successful real estate investing career. And so I hope that it was an inspiration to them. And as you also mentioned, for uh, you know, opportunity for someone to, to make a high rate of return. And so we're just uh, kind of an honor to be here. That's awesome. Aaron, parting comments. Jay, it was a pleasure to be on, on the show. Always an honor to speak with you. It's great to uh, get to share with you what we're doing. Excited where we're headed. And hopefully, hopefully something we sit on here will uh, help somebody, encourage, inspire a real estate investor. And it's a great opportunity as well for anyone that's looking for a great rate of return on their money. It's safe and secure. Awesome. All right. Well, thank you, Aaron. Thank you, Andrew. It's been a blast to have you all on and hope to see you in person before too long. And uh, there's probably a good chance that we will uh, with the conferences that we go to and such. So to our viewers and listeners, thank you for uh, tuning in and watching and listening. If you're watching on YouTube, be sure to uh, comment below with any questions you have on real estate investing. We'll get those answered for you. Be sure to uh, subscribe and share. We appreciate that. And if you are uh, listening on uh, audio with the iTunes or Google Play, etc., be sure to uh, subscribe, rate, and review. Again, my upcoming live event, I want to see you all there. So check it out again one more time and get registered at www.jayconner.com forward slash money podcast. I'm Jay Connor, the Private Money Authority. Until next time, taking your real estate investing career to the next level. We'll see you later. Bye for now.